This is a, a video of motion in the solar system, and I just want you to watch the video and tell me what you notice about it. So go ahead and type any of your observations into the chat, and hopefully this will you know, stream okay with your video quality. All right, so just observing the types of orbits that you see in the solar system, what is it that stands out to you about this? Um, if you look carefully at the animation, all of the planets that are closest to the sun are moving faster. So our learning goals of today are to explain how objects orbit using Kepler's laws and to describe the connection between Newton's laws of gravitation and Kepler's laws of planetary motion um, because the two are deeply connected, but they can seem like a little bit of distinct concepts at first. So we'll try to draw that connection. And then we're gonna apply Newton's law of gravitation to understand the force between objects. Uh, the reason we're gonna focus on this now is because we're gonna come back and use Newton's laws of gravitation later in the class um, when we talk about the planets and uh, specifically their atmospheres. And then finally, we're gonna uh, use Kepler's laws to explain kind of differences in the orbital sizes, speeds, and shapes of planets, asteroids, and comets. So planets, asteroids, and comets all have different shapes of orbits and different speeds during different parts of their orbits, and you'll be able to explain exactly why that is by the end of this class. All right. So starting with uh, Kepler's laws, um, just recall in the heliocentric model that Copernicus developed, it was definitely simpler than Ptolemy's geocentric model, but it still didn't make very good predictions about the locations of the planets. And this was because Copernicus was still really attached to the idea of perfect circular orbits. And in fact, um, the planets don't orbit in circles, but they orbit in ellipses. So what is an ellipse anyway? Um, a circle just has a single central point, but an ellipse has actually two central points. Each one is called a focus, and plural, we call them the foci of the ellipse. And if you wanted to draw an ellipse, this is basically how you do it. Um, if you put two pins at the points of your two uh, foci, and then you'd have to use some kind of, you know, piece of string so to set a set distance, then if you just trace around with your pencil while keeping that string tight, you'll make an ellipse. And so a circle just has a single radius, but an ellipse sort of has two different important distance units. One of them is called the semi-major axis, and that's basically the long radius, and that's always called A. And then it has a short radius, which is called the semi-minor axis, which we denote by B. And so the um, lengths of the semi-major axis versus the semi-minor axis can change, and that defines the eccentricity of the ellipse. So a very low eccentricity, for example, would be a circle, which has an eccentricity of zero. It's not sort of squashed at all. And in the case of a circle, both of the foci are actually at the center of the circle. And then as you get more and more eccentric ellipses, it sort of stretches out longer and longer. And you'll notice that the um, very edge of the ellipse is very close to one of those focuses. So if you stretch an ellipse all the way out, you end up with a line. And a line has an eccentricity of one. So all the eccentricities lie between zero and one somewhere. So I have a poll question for you, which is, um, which of these objects has the largest eccentricity? And I would say that if we consider the cigar here to be an ellipse, which it's not really an ellipse, is it? Um, but if we consider it to be an ellipse, then it definitely has the highest eccentricity, followed by the watermelon, followed by the egg, and then the basketball is a circle. So that has no eccentricity at all. All right. Um, so how does the ellipse relate to Kepler's laws? Well, Kepler's first law is really simple. It's just that all planets orbit the sun in an ellipse, and actually not just the planets, but all the objects in the solar system have elliptical orbits. And the sun is at one of the uh, foci of the ellipse, and the other focus doesn't have anything special there. So the sun is at one, um, but the other focus is just empty. Um, this is really exaggerated. The Earth doesn't have this eccentric of an orbit. It's almost circular. Um, but just for reference, the Earth would be on this um, ellipse on the outside, and then the Sun is at one focus. 
And um, like I said before, because objects that are very in very eccentric orbits um, get very close to that focus, that means they get very close to the sun during that part of their orbit. And so this leads us to have to define some special locations in an orbit. One is called the perihelion, which is when a planet is closest to the sun. And the other one is called the aphelion, when a planet is farthest away from the sun. And um, it took me a long time to figure, like to remember which is which. So for me, I say aphelion is away. And that's how I keep track. Okay, so which of these animations showing a planet orbiting around a star is physically realistic? So I would argue that if you look at orbit A, the planet is orbiting in an elliptical orbit around a star where that star is at the center of the ellipse. But remember that when we have an ellipse, the sun is at one focus and the focus is not at the center of the ellipse, it's actually off center. So A cannot be a realistic orbit. Um, C is also not an elliptical orbit. Planets don't orbit in non-ellipses. Uh, so B and D are, are real possibilities now. And if I look at B versus D, I see that in B we have an elliptical orbit and the sun seems to be at a focus that's very near the edge of that ellipse. And when I look at D, I see an orbit that looks to be mostly circular with the sun off center. But remember that when we have a circle, the center of the circle is the focus and actually both foci overlap at the center of that circle. And so because the circular orbit of D has a sun that is off center from uh, the center of the circle, then D is not really realistic. If it's really a circular orbit, the sun should be at the center. And if it's a very small eccentricity, the sun should still look very close to the center and the sun will look farther and farther off center as the orbit becomes more and more eccentric. So for that reason, I would say that B is the most physically realistic of these orbits. <laughs>